five Senate Republicans indicating that they will vote yes to codify the rainbow marriage bill that they are trying to pass right now. Which Republicans are they? We'll get into all the details of this and much more, guys, in less than 10 seconds. First, if you could, if YT lets you, try and hit that like button for me. Also, very important, you please share the video, hit the bell, subscribe, I wear the glasses because I'm blind. And if you guys can help out, donate here to my ministry. See more information in the description. So... The Democrats have authored the Respect for Marriage Act. Except the fact that it's not really marriage. Why are they doing this? Fear. One word to describe it. But why are they fearful? Oh, I don't know. Could it have something to do with the fact that Roe went bye-bye? Bye-bye. See you later. The states now have the power when it comes to that. Now... Clarence Thomas, as we know, great justice, by the way. Many people would disagree, but that's fine. Hinted, hinted, and this, by the way, wasn't just with the Roe decision. He hinted at this years ago. Back in 2020, I did a video when Thomas was talking about it even then. But it's even more relevant now in light of Roe. So what are the Democrats doing? They are rushing to try and codify rainbow marriage because Thomas hinted that we should once again revisit that issue. So I reported last week that the House already overwhelmingly voted yes to codify rainbow marriage. They don't want this thing, you know, even going back over to the Supreme Court. And yes, 40 Seven Republicans voted yes, along with the Democrats. That's a big number, ladies and gentlemen. Very telling, right? That's what that is. is that's an indictment on the Republican Party as a whole, who is a joke. And I've been saying this for a while. I will continue. A red wave in November doesn't really mean anything. The only red wave I'm concerned about is a red wave that's the blood of Jesus. That's the only thing that's going to cleanse this nation will be the blood of Jesus that's going to come with a lot of repentance, not by putting your faith and trust in a politician. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. These Republicans will let you down. So, since you had the 47 House Republicans that voted along with the Dems to help them along here with their, oh, immorality, we now move our attention over to the Senate and if this bill gets brought up for a vote there, which I believe it will. And now we have information that, count them, ladies and gentlemen, five Cinco Republicans have indicated that, that they will, in fact, yes, be voting along with the Democrats to codify rainbow marriage. Of course, you need at least 60 votes here and the Dems would need at least 10 Republicans on board to make this official. And it looks like they already have five. So who are they? Let's just get into it. Senator Rob Portman said that he would be a yes vote. Senator Ron Johnson, who said, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't vote yes on this. This is respect for everybody. <laughs> okay. Senator Tom Tillis said that he would vote yes on the measure. Then let's get to the two most obvious who we would expect. Senator Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, who said years ago that she already supported rainbow relationships and the like, said that she would vote yes on the bill as well. And interestingly enough about Lisa, she's up for re-election. But does she care? No, she doesn't care at all. Not one bit. Not one bit. Is she going to get ousted? Quite possibly, but they don't care. You got to understand, I've talked about this before. These rhinos, these Dems, whoever, when they dig their heels in on something, they don't care, ladies and gentlemen, what their poll numbers say. They don't care about any of it. 
And sometimes they don't care about it because, well, they got some things going on behind the scenes to where they're not really all that worried about losing their spot. Just saying. I don't have to say it to say it. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. So, there's that. She's not worried. Now, who's the final one? The final one to indicate that they will vote yes. Not only vote yes, but they are, in fact, one of the co-sponsors of the bill itself. None other than Senator Susan Collins of Maine. Yes, who believes that we should be respecting marriage for all people, no matter what their background, who they are. Forget traditional marriage. Forget what the Bible says. Forget all of it doesn't matter. A co-sponsor, ladies and gentlemen, a so-called Republican, let that sink in, let it sink in, okay? These are just five that have indicated to be yes votes. There were a ton of others that were interviewed, that were asked the question, that replied, no comment. No comment. No comment. To me, no comment means yes. That you are leaning towards codifying this. I think they very well could get way more than 10. And I believe Mitt Romney would be another one that would vote yes on this because he was very upset that Clarence Thomas would even dare raise this. Even bring it up. Yeah, good old Mitt Romney from Utah, right? Let's also not forget that four Republican House members from Utah all voted yes to codify the rainbow marriage. If it does, in fact, pass, well, to me, it's another strike on this country. It's another mark on the country. Judgment will come. Judgment will come. I said even before that if the court were even to revisit this, how many states would even reverse it? It would be way less than the Roe thing, right? I said at the time, probably less than 10, maybe less than five, to be perfectly honest with you. Because what people don't understand and I, I love some of the points that have been made here because so many Republicans care about, what, protecting female sports, right? They're more adamant about that. But yet when it comes to the marriage issue, they have no problem compromising that. That is what started this whole thing in 2015. That started it. It was the willingness to compromise that that led to all of what we see in our society today, the darkness, the filth, the immorality, all of it, the drag stuff with the kids in the schools, the education system, all of it, they compromise that one thing, that one thing. Now, I know the court made the decision, but so many of the states were already leaning in that direction anyway, and so few were willing to come out and speak out against it after the decision came down. And then you had, what, even churches that were saying that there was nothing wrong with it. They were accepting it. I always say this, guys, the door of compromise, when you just open it a crack, what does it do? It allows for the devil to kick it wide open. All you have to do is just provide the crack. The door to compromise should always be shut and locked, never cracked. You don't ever compromise biblical truth. If you do, you will answer to God. If you want to appease man here on earth, that'll last you for only so long. Remember at the end of time, you stand before God and God alone and give an account of your life unto him. These people won't be around you. Is it worth your eternity? That's the question. Is it worth it? Because you have a choice. You have a choice whether to serve God or not. Do you want to be righteous or do you want to be unrighteous? What do you care more about? To me, it doesn't seem worth the risk of your eternity to play these games, to win over approval, 
to play for positions of power. Oh, I'm so virtuous. I stood up and respected marriage. Yes, I might be a Republican and whatever, but this is just the way things are now. You notice how it always goes that way? It's never the other way. You don't ever see 47 Democrats that would vote with the Republicans in the reverse, right? It's never that way. No, it's always the so-called party that's supposed to be the one that represents traditional, you know, biblical principles that always caves and compromises and goes towards the dark side. Crack a compromise. Crack a compromise. I'll leave it there. I'll put more information on this for you guys in the description. You can let me know your thoughts. Also, if you enjoy my daily content here talking about end time Bible prophecy headlines, you want to help support the ministry with a generous donation, click the link to my PayPal down below or sign up on my Patreon for five bucks a month. When you do, you'll be alerted for all the content I put out. If you only watch these videos through YT Alerts, you're going to miss a ton of my content. They'll barely send them anymore, guys. So not only... Well, you get all the alerts, but you can comment censorship free, send direct messages. It's a great time. You guys should go check me out on Patreon. All the links down below. Big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity greatly appreciated. Now, I'm not done just yet. I don't leave any video here without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that's you, if you're watching right now, you're someone that has not yet given your life to Christ, make that decision today because time is running out. And Jesus is coming soon. This is your chance. This is your opportunity. The first thing that you want to do, and I'll lead you in this prayer. You can do it in your own words. You want to acknowledge that you're a sinner. It's something that we all are. But I'll tell you the good news. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin. Not just say you're sorry and jump back in your old ways. To turn from those lifestyles, those habits, those things which are not of the word of God. But if you humbly go before the Lord and you ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. And the Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this down below. As I mentioned, you guys can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you, and I'll talk soon.